So if you've uh, attended or watched uh, one of the C++ conferences in the recent years, you, must, you might have heard the statement that contiguity of data matters. So that's what I will base my talk on. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, a uh, few quotes from the C++ luminaries. Uh, spoiler alert. Scott Myers, uh, locality counts, predictable access pattern count. Herb Sutter, uh, in his uh, modern C++ talk, access uh, patterns matter, linear is better. And finally, Bjorn, uh, in C++11 style, uh, had his famous vector versus list benchmark when he showed that uh, array or a vector is often faster than a list. Of course, uh, don't take any of the statement at the face value. Always verify uh, it with your data. But assuming that uh, the, this will be true for, for your program, you would want to define the data, uh, a contiguous data, how would you do it uh, in C++? So suppose you want to allocate a thousand elements in a contiguous matter. You could do it old school way, uh, in plain old C array. You could use std array. You could use std vector. Uh, you could theoretically use std deck, which is mostly contiguous, although it has really a chunk of contiguous data, so it would be really not good for what we'll be talking about today. Sorry about that. Uh, if you're more on the bleeding edge, there is uh, this new proposal implemented in some compilers like studdin array from array extensions TS. Of course, there are other libraries. Uh, contiguous data is most, most common, I believe, in BLAST libraries or image processing libraries uh, where you're processing bitmaps. And of course, you will have your homegrown types. Each of them, of course, is valuable. Each of them has different properties. Some are sized statically, some are sized dynamically. Some are resizable, uh, some have their size fixed, so uh, it's not really a one size fits all for, for them. Uh, that's why uh, if you want to write an algorithm that is accepting n of them and processes the contiguous data in some manner, you'd probably start with a template function like that, uh, with a generic function, uh, which actually uh, might be too generic if you want to overload on them, uh, on it, because uh, what it accepts is really a universe of types, modulo, modulo void, uh, which is problem if you overload or if you want to have uh, sensible error messages when something's gone wrong. Concepts are a solution to that, uh, but we are not there yet. So for now, what you might use as a crutch is uh, some kind of sphene like that or static assertion. Uh, but given that you went through all the pain of defining that, you want to start using this function. You're calling it with std vector, works just fine. std array, works just fine. Assuming we are using dot size for getting the size of the thing and bracket operators for accessing single elements. Then you try to pass the old school array, not so good anymore. So as an alternative, we can try the C way of things, uh, where we accept the raw pointer and its size, where of course we can pass a vector. Uh, it's C, so of course we can pass a C array. We even uh, get to use a macro. Uh, then you can uh, generalize your algorithm to more dimensions, so you add uh, more function uh, parameters uh, for two-dimensional, you have width and height. For three-dimensional, you have depth, uh, and so on. All the alternative in C++, uh, what we're proposing, is an interface based on array view, where you would specify the interface uh, as here. So basically, this would be a compute function that's taking an array view of a given type. and how would you how would you call it? Uh, so given that you have data as a std vector, you can create an array view over this vector. So this is the array view which refers to the data in this vector, and you call the function with it. If the extra line is too much, uh, then there is a, the constructor is uh, implicit, so you can just call the compute function with the passing the uh, vector as a parameter, which will create the array view behind the covers. This will work equally well for the C array, for std array, 
or for any of the, of the types I've uh, described in the beginning. So it really generalizes the way you're uh, accepting contiguous data in the algorithm. So this whole view thing might sound familiar with you uh, because there was one other proposal uh, that went through standardization recently, which is the string view. It is really the same concept, although string view is geared towards string data. So it accepts two string and char uh, star, uh, so string literals, uh, you name it, as the, as the thing that you view onto. And in return, it gives uh, some functions specific to uh, strings, like finding a substring in a string, uh, and so on. While array view is a more generic approach, it is really for any contiguous data. And uh, actually, this, there is more in array view. There are multiple dimensions. So while well, I already told you how we can transform the, for, the first uh, C style function into uh, something accepting array view, the two dimensional case would be also an array view, just with an additional template uh, parameter specifying the rank or the number of dimensions of the data that you view. So in this case, it'd be two, it can be three or anything else. And to call the, the function with the, to specify the multidimensional uh, array view, starting with, say, a vector as an example, uh, while well, passing the vector to this first overload, uh, the single dimensional is, is quite obvious. We don't need to add any more information because the vector is single dimensional. We know how large it is, so the array, we know how, the, how large the array view is. Uh, but if you want to view it in a two dimensional manner, uh, we need to specify the, the size of the thing uh, in the logical view, uh, logical multi dimensional view, for example, 20 by 50 elements. So by doing that, we're lifting the linear memory of the vector into a logically multidimensional representation. Uh, so this is how would, we, how would we do it on the interface side. For the implementation, uh, I'll go through a quick example. So uh, we'll run a simple edge detection algorithm, or rather uh, 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 edge detection algorithm that fits on a slide. It's not really an edge detection algorithm. Uh, so, given the input image being a two-dimensional matrix of uh, assigned integers, uh, which each one specifying the brightness of a pixel, uh, quite obvious, we will convolve it by this uh, three by three matrix, and then uh, apply binarization of the arbitrary threshold of 150, which gives quite uh, acceptable results uh, for what I've tried it on. So, this would this how would it would like. Uh, in the C style algorithm. Um, there are two problems I say it did. So first, we have two nested for loops to iterate over the image. And uh, I know it might be not obvious that it's, it's a problem, but really there is a single image which just happens to, to be a two dimensional space. So there is really no implicit reason for it to view it as, a, as, as two separate things. We really want to iterate over this single entity which is a two-dimensional image. So we have these nest unnecessary nested loops. And of course, we have the error-prone uh, address calculation. So with array view, uh, this, will, this is how it would look like. So uh, let's go quickly dissecting it. So uh, of course, we change the argument type to take an array view. Uh, in this case, there are input and output arguments. Next, we can uh, define for helper vectors, which will help us uh, offset in the local neighborhood of each pixel to, to change the error-prone calculation into a single going around the, the single pixel. So uh, there is one for each cardinal direction. Next, we'll solve the first of the two problems, replacing the nested two for loops with a single loop that's giving us an index for every element in this two-dimensional space, which we use subsequently to address the data. Uh, checking boundary conditions on, on both sides is, is quite similar, but you can see how the index, uh, how we can access the single components of the index or bounds of the, of the array view. And of course, we replace the, the error prone address calculation of just a simple uh, accessing uh, element with the, by the index, either directly or with the, with the offsets uh, we've defined earlier. So this is how it is, and it's full. 
So what we really did is we view algorithm in a slightly different way. So while the traditional view of algorithm is we have, uh, as we call it, these elemental algorithms, when we have a sequence of objects, not necessarily contiguous, just a sequence of objects, and we are getting a reference to the or value of the first ar argument, then we move the cursor to the second argument, uh, second element, getting its value, and so on. On the with the indexable approach to algorithms, what we really have is a abstract uh, abstract space of, of the coordinates uh, where we're getting the we're getting the first index uh, which will be zero uh, zero and we move to the next element the index one uh, for the single dimensional case which then we can use this index to address a, a concrete data structure either directly or with a local neighborhood uh, like we did in the example before and the corollary of having the index-based algorithms is uh, enabling index-based parallelism in C++. So while the index-based algorithm of the regular STL uh, just gives us the single index for each element in the space, when we add the uh, C++ extensions for parallelism technical specification, or how we call it, parallel STL uh, to the mix, we get to specify an additional argument to the, to the algorithm, uh, which will ask for execution in parallel. And with the rest remaining unchanged, what we really get is a mapping between every index and an execution uh, agent, which might be a thread or a vector lane, which uh, we allow to execute in a parallel. This is a very similar model to what you have might seen in C++ AMP which uh, there's really a striking similarity uh, if you look at it. But it's also in CUDA with a, strikely, with a slightly more obtrusive syntax or in uh, OpenCL, uh, greatly simplified for the slide, but all the elements are still there uh, if you want to find them. The other thing I want to tell you about ArrayView, it, it has a pointer semantics. So uh, to explain what does it mean, I'll go by an example. So if you define a vector with uh, 9,001 elements, and you create a copy of the vector, and you're also copying over 9,000 elements. Uh, on the other hand, pointer uh, might refer to a single to a to a range in memory that is allocated, or uh, more commonly, uh, there are no only pointers; you just point to the to the to the thing. So uh, copying a pointer is almost three operation. Array view is in this manner similar to, to the pointer. Uh, so creating an array view refers to the, to the vector that is uh, allocated somewhere. So the array view is really a lightweight object. Uh, so we can freely create copies of them. That's why in the functions that I've shown on previous slide, we're always passing it by value. Um, of course, it has a, 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 there is one caveat here that if the vector uh, goes away and the array views are left out uh, dangling pointing to a void space so some car some care must be must be taken similarly like with with pointers but i believe this is the only caveat uh, there the second aspect of pointer semantics is the constness which like in pointers can be applied in uh, two places we can have a constant view uh, which we specify the const uh, either before or after uh, the type depending on the test, uh, but this is equivalent to pointer defined uh, like this, which means we can modify the data the pointer points to, but we cannot modify the pointer itself. Uh, the second side is view over the constant data, where we, for our review, we put the const specifier uh, inside the template argument list. Uh, so it's, again, equivalent to constant pointer which means we cannot modify the data, the view is over. Uh, we can only read, read it, so it's the other, uh, we can also call it a read-only array view, uh, but we can modify the, the view itself, say assign it to another view. <coughs> of course, volatile uh, gets similar treatment, but I won't go uh, in details through that. And uh, you can have constants in both places, so it can be a constant view over constant data. <coughs> Other operations uh, I'll cover briefly for array view. 
is uh, slicing and sectioning the array view. So if we'll have a, a real small array view that's five by five elements, uh, getting a slice from it, which we do by taking the subscript operator, we return the array view to a, we return a view over the single slice of data, so uh, shaving off the uh, highest dimension and uh, returning the array view with rank less by one uh, than the original. Uh, section, on the other hand, is an algorithm where we, uh, is an operation which gives us another view uh, that refers to, uh, to the same, uh, the, to the view of the same rank, uh, but possibly smaller. Uh, you might notice that this view is no longer contiguous, uh, so it's so it cannot be array view, which assumes contiguity. It's another type we're, uh, we're introducing uh, called strided array view, which is mostly uh, similar to the array view. It's just instead of guaranteeing contiguity, it guarantees uh, uniform uh, strides between the elements in, in dimensions. So all in all, there are uh, four types that uh, there are five types that we are introducing. Bounds and index are the types used for defining the multidimensional bounds and indexing within them. Uh, there is a reason for them to be a separate types. Uh, uh, there, is, there is more explanation for that in the, in the paper I will refer to. I don't want to spend too much time on it because these are details. Uh, these are the array view and strided array view. And finally, it's, there is a bounds iterator which we haven't seen explicitly on the prior slide, but it's the thing that powers the algorithms and letting us to get index for every, uh, every element in the space defined by bounds. So it's mostly a behind the scenes things. We're moving the array view towards the standardization. We first introduce it in the paper uh, 3851, uh, which if you want, is uh, if you want to read more, I would refer you to this paper, which we, which where we gave uh, most of the background why uh, and discussion about design decisions. We presented this to Library Evolution Working Group at the Isaqua meeting, uh, just a few miles from here, in February. Uh, the committee answer was a consensus to prepare the work to take the paper forward to prepare the wording for Arise technical specification, which we did. And we presented it in a Rappersville meeting uh, in Switzerland in June. Uh, the committee, uh, again, the Library Evolution uh, Working Group, again, um, requested some fixes and improvements to the paper, and, but it was with a consensus to move it forward. Uh, however, the target changes now. It's Fundamentals version two, technical specification. So right now we are on the stage where the paper with the bug fixes uh, is ready. It's going to be presented to library working group. So we've moved one stage further in the process, which will be presented in November to at Urbana Champagne meeting. And uh, we're hoping it will be accepted to fundamentals VS, uh, to fundamentals uh, TS. We view the paper as we proposed as a foundational layer. We don't really explore the design space fully. We only propose the, uh, the first, the smallest fully contained set of features that we have, and we're encouraging community to add more uh, to it by the extensions and by subsequent papers, not necessarily from us. I want to highlight uh, three such proposals, three ideas of how we, how we can add more to it. Uh, there is, as far as I know, there is no proposal on them yet. Uh, these are just ideas that were uh, floated either on ESO, C++, ARC forums, or uh, in email communication, but uh, I like them. So there is an idea of having an array view with fixed size. So it's, it would be a two array view like uh, std array is to std vector, same analogy. Uh, then the f a request for an explicit switch between column major and row major uh, addressing uh, or um, layout uh, for the array view. Uh, this was driven mostly by people working both in C++ and Fortran. And lastly, the uh, traversal order for bounds iterator that would be parameterizable. 
Uh, the right now, the Traversa order is a, is a row major, so we go uh, row by row, it's similar like you would iterate over two-dimensional or multi-dimensional data in uh, C++. But there are more uh, things like uh, column major order, uh, Morton order, or even Hilbert curve. Our proof of concept is available online at parallelstlcodeplex.com. Uh, this is the online repository where also our implementation of the parallelstl uh, so the C++ extension for parallelism technical specification lives. Uh, the implementation for the uh, for the parallel STL is uh, Windows only. No? Uh, we rely on some OS primitives, but the RA view part uh, of it is, is self-contained and should be portable to a different compiler. So if you want to rip pieces out of it, these are the two headers which should be which should uh, run just fine in, in any modern C++ compiler. Uh, with that, uh, we have a few minutes left for question. Uh, I can take them now, or uh, this is my email address if you want to contact me uh, later. Thank you. Please go ahead. You're talking about changing the row order? Yes. It is. So one of the reasons for changing the uh, cardinality order between these two is uh, one is really friendly for accessing. So uh, one reason is the interrupt with Fortran, which, which changes. The other reason um, that uh, we've discussed is while one order is uh, friendly for CPU caches when you are uh, reading or writing the data, the, the other order is friendly for a GPU uh, coalescing of a memory where you don't really want to be uh, writing to the same cache line uh, from multiple threads. So there is, there is aspect to that, yes. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>